need different control elements for your cap sorting elevator. You have your conveyor, a speed potentiometer. You have your elevator on off switch, your emergency stop control, and you have your backup sensors. One, it functions as your full shoot pause sensor. The other one functions as your backup sensor. The backup sensor is mounted here, just above the cap chute. So when it is filled, the elevator will stop running caps through to prevent any kind of jamming. The other sensor mounts to your capper and will alert the system when there is a full cap chute. To adjust the settings for your fiber optic sensors, you go in one at a time and manipulate with these buttons at the top and at the bottom of the module. The center button is the one that you will cycle through to change the settings on your fiber optic amp. For the first amp here, this is the uh, full shoot pause for the capper. So we want to ensure that the full shoot pause is set to dark on and you can cycle through with the center button. The left right toggle will turn it on to dark on or light on and we want dark. And then you can cycle through back to top up display. The other settings to ensure with the backup sensor are the you hold that center button down and you'll get an advanced menu option. The ones that we are concerned with are in the advanced menu. So cycle over using the left right toggle into advanced the detection mode. We want to ensure that it is set to standard. The output timer we want to set to on off delay. You have a few different options on delay, off, off delay. We want again to make sure that we are on on off delay for both fiber optic amps. For the duration, we want to change that to 500 milliseconds or half a second. And the same with duration two. And you can increase or decrease your delay with the toggle switch. And those are the only set settings that need to be adjusted. To return to the main menu, hold down your center button and it will take you back. The cover cap prevents any accidental contact or setting changes. On the other sensor, this one is for the uh, backup sensor. We want to ensure that it is set to light on And then we also want to make sure that the sensor settings are at half a second. Power modes we ignore. Again, we go into the advanced menu with the center button. Detection mode, we want to make sure is standard. The output timer, again, on off delay. Duration one, 500 milliseconds. Duration two, also 500 milliseconds. Once those settings are in place, hold down that button, back to top display, and it will automatically clear out. The next option we're going to look at is setting the sensor to detect when a cap is in front of the sensor versus when there is no cap in front of the sensor. When calibrating the sensors to detect a full shoot, pause, or the backup sensor, you need to use a cap to help program the sensor correctly. So starting with our full shoot, our, our backup sensor, we put a cap in place and ensure 
that it is blocking the sensor. You see the values change. So what we do is ensure the cap is properly in place, open up the cover and press the set button on the bottom here. Wait for it to blink. Once it finishes blinking, it is calibrated to detect a cap. Then remove the blockage and repeat that same process. It is already set in this case. So as we can test it by putting the cap in place and removing it, and we will see that it clears the obstruction. And we repeat that process for the full shoot pause sensor. So once again, we move our cap into the proper placement, ensure that it is blocking the sensor, and you can verify that by watching the value change. And with the cap in front of the sensor, we can program the sensor to detect when there is a cap. And then we can also set it to detect when there is no cap in place. And now with those settings in place, your cap elevator will operate until one of these two sensors is activated. When it is activated, it will stop the conveyor system from taking caps and running them into your capping machine. Once calibrated, you can test the operation of your cap elevator to ensure that the sensors are working properly. So we ensure that there is a blockage here and that will stop the backup sensor. Then as we allow the cap to continue through, and we remove the caps from blocking the full sheet sensor, it will allow the conveyor to operate. To adjust the tension of your conveyor chain, you utilize the tension rods on the left and right side of the elevator frame. Adjusting those will allow you to tighten or loosen the conveyor chain and also allow you to access inside if you need to remove the chain. The first setup for your cap sorting elevator, one of the first steps you want to take is to get your caps and the cap chute set to a matching size. Your adjustments are handled through this knob here. It will open and close your cap chute until you set the cap to the right width. You don't want it set too tight to pinch the caps, but you also don't want your caps falling out. Now, to verify the cap, you can insert your cap over the top here of the Plinko board and put it through to ensure that it does travel down the entire cap chute without any obstruction. Once you have that set, your next move is to set the angle of your elevator so your caps qualify correctly. Find an angle to start testing your cap sorting elevator with and take steps to see if the caps will qualify as they come through here. As they travel up, we only want the caps facing out to qualify. Any caps that are facing the wrong direction, we want them to drop off at this point. Once you have the angle set on your elevator, you want to verify that your caps will qualify in the proper orientation by the time they reach here on your cap elevator. 
caps facing the wrong direction will fall off. And as they travel up the conveyor, they will hit the sleeve arm and travel onto the Plinko board through the cap. At this point, you want to verify that there are no obstructions, no caps getting caught, and no sticking in the cap. After moving your sorting elevator into position with your capper, you'll need to adjust the height of your C chute so that it matches up with the cap chute on the capper. That is done with this adjustment wheel right here. When you adjust the height, you want the opening in the C chute to line up with the cap chute. You can fine tune that as you get the machines closer together. In this case, this is a little bit too high. You want the two machines as close as possible without contacting each other. A good way to test this is to drop your cap in from the top of the Plinko board and test to make sure that it transitions through without any obstructions. And fine tuning adjustments can be made here or with the adjustment wheel for the cap chute height. Here's a slightly different angle to show the cap transition into the chute. Any and all fine tuning adjustments can be made through here or through the adjustment wheel.